Hey everyone, it's Jack here, Talk Nerd City. I hope you're doing very well. Um, back today for another video, two in two days, and it's not even the season, I know. Uh, it's been busy at Nerd City this week. Um, Stuart Webber's interview. Um, everyone will have taken something different from that over half an hour long. I'm sure everyone's watched it and watched it again. I know I have. Um, I think the common thing kind of consensus from that was one uh, of a slightly muddled storyline from Stuart Weber but uh, he he raised some some valid points and some points that I, I didn't feel completely at ease with but um, I'm sure there will uh, there will be more opinions on that once the dust settles but not here to talk about that today and instead some really exciting uh, and surprising news from Norwich City uh, the American multi-millionaire businessman Mark Antan Atanasio, Mark Atanasio, there we go, uh, is in talks over a major investment in Norwich City. Uh, it's a beautiful Friday evening. It's exciting. I've got my Lakens. Um, everything is suddenly feeling somewhat better um, than yesterday. If you want 20% off Lakens, by the way. Uh, the link is in the description. We've got an exclusive newsletter with them, uh, exclusive content, and there'll also be a 20% off link for their ales. Uh, check that out. Look, Stuart Webber said in his interview, didn't he, that uh, expect some exciting and surprising news, I think were his words, in the coming weeks. And I was thinking, hmm, where are we going here? Or are we sort of extending the colony vent, uh, veggie patch? Uh, are we making Josh Sargent the mayor of Norwich? I didn't know what to expect, but it certainly wasn't external investment. And it kind of now makes a little bit more sense why Norwich have been so quiet and coy over the past few months uh, if this was rattling uh, on under the radar. So who is Mark and, and, and Tanazio? I'm going to call him Mark. Uh, for the rest of this video. Well, he's a very rich man from the United States of America uh, who is the owner of the Milwaukee Brewers. Um, they are a baseball team uh, as well as owning uh, the Brewers, which is why he's kind of most known. Uh, he's also um, uh, the co-founder of Crescent Capital Group, which is just the most generic sounding uh, ca capital group ever. The Crescent Capital Group, um, alongside Robert Bayer and Jean-Marc Chapus, uh, with an estimation of assets in that reportedly worth $25 billion. Um, in terms of Mark, he's worth $700 million. That's a lot of money. Um, and also part owns uh, an ice hockey team in Wisconsin. Um, so... There we go. There's the there's the kind of top line stats around this. There was a picture tweeted from Rob Butler, and and it must be said as well. Actually, this story originally broke uh, on the Pinker and the EDP. A, a fantastic scoop by the guys over there. So well done to Connor Southerl and Paddy Davitt and all of all of their colleagues. This I can't imagine was an easy story to unsurface. Um, and they've done it incredibly well and packaged it nicely. So a, a nod to those guys and also a nod to all of our local media who I think in terms of coverage around a single uh, team, we're incredibly lucky for. So well done to everyone there. I, I think this is fascinating and I think it's really exciting. Um, I, of course, didn't know who Mark um, was ahead of or before today, as I don't think too many people um did unless you follow American sports closely. I think having uh, sort of listened to others and, and read pieces from other people, this feels like a fairly natural fit. Um, there was a nice tweet from um, Bethnal YNG who said, according to an MLB loving friend, um, Tanazio has done great work at the Brewers, very hands on, uh, brings in lots of expertise to help, very data driven. Um, but then he says most baseball is nowadays. I think for this to get to this stage. And what I mean by this stage is uh, the fact that um, Mark and his representatives were at Carrow Road um, for the Tottenham game. These are clearly in fairly advanced talks. Now, whether this happens is still up in the air. The level in which this happens, because I think it's really interesting that none of these reports have included the word takeover. It's all around investment. Now, I'm not by any stretch, a finance expert, and I'm sure there'll be people far more suited to that area of expertise than me. But what I'm, I'm led to believe is that there will be new shares created, 
these guys will buy into them and they will probably become the majority shareholders, but it won't be a complete takeover. Delia and Michael Wynne Jones will still hold shareholdings um, that have a minority and they will still be involved in the football club. Now, that feels like the best of both worlds. I think we can all agree that for Norwich City to progress, we need external investment equally. I think even if you're the most anti Delia person, you can agree that their um, their care for this football club. Um, and their vision for this football club is is one of um, great care. And I think that's important, especially when you're looking to d- develop at the rate, which we clearly are, if we're seeking this kind of investment. So I think that's important to be aware of. These guys were at Tottenham, um, having been pumped 5-0. I'm surprised they weren't completely turned off by, <laughs> by the proposition of buying Norwich City, having watched that performance. Um... But they weren't. And I think having listened to Delia Smith in the public eye and having been lucky enough to to spend time with Delia over certain kind of dinners and stuff, they've always been incredibly careful to who they've let close to this football club. And, And what I mean by that is we've never necessarily been up for sale. We've always been listening, but not actively seeking external investment. And I think when you're at that stage, you are really picky with who you want to let into this football club. And I guess rightly so, because they've always deemed themselves as kind of custodians of, of Norwich rather than the owners. They've always deemed the club bigger than them, as they should do. Um, and they will be seeing, I guess, the next few years as an opportunity now to take this football club forwards. You would hope, anyway. They are coming to a stage in their life that I can't imagine they want huge amounts of stress. They want to offload some of their some of their shares for, for, for sizable cash. Um, and that's what we want as Norwich City fans. I think we will all be coming at this with a slightly different viewpoint. Some will be very anti Delia and Michael Wynne Jones, and I get that opinion. Some will be incredibly pro Delia and Michael Wynne Jones and will be happy with where we are at the moment, bouncing between divisions and will be satisfied with um, the, the lack of risk that comes with the kind of ownership we have at the moment. But I think if you can find a balance of keeping what's good about the football club, the community spirit, Delia and Michael and the, and the kind of the, the values that this football club holds whilst also looking to financially um, you know, inject ourselves with, with sizable cash, I think you're in a really good place then. And I think that's, that's what this football club needs to, to step forwards. I think the big frustration and the reason why myself and others have been um, disappointed with the way that the football club have communicated this season has been, one, because we failed at our objective, and that will always be a huge frustration, but also, what's the plan now? It kind of felt when Stuart and, and Daniel Farker first came in, there was a clear vision, there was a clear plan, things went well, it was communicated nicely, but when things have turned slightly sour and not gone to plan, then what's our outlook for the next few years? And I think that's all football fans want. They want a clear direction, they want a vision, And they want someone to communicate that um, and provide clarity. And I don't think we've had that. That may have been because that this has been going on under the radar. I don't think it's an excuse for the for the lack of um, clarity given by those at the you know the top end of Norwich City Football Club. Nor is it been an excuse for the on pitch and off pitch failings. But if we can get this somewhat over the line, then that's to me a step forwards. Of course. This is still very early stages um, and I suspect it will be a little while before anything um, is finalised to any kind of extent. But at least now we have something to be excited about and I think that um, is, is is genuine. So there we go. Mark Atanasio. I'm sure I will learn to pronounce that surname better in weeks to come. Um, but that's what we know at the moment. There is genuine interest from um, American multimillionaire Mark Atanasio um, in wanting to put significant investment into Norwich City Football Club. Let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear them. As always, I'll be going through the comment section. And if you want to celebrate the news with the Lakens, there's 20% off down in the description below. Just click on that, sign up to the newsletter and you'll be sent exclusive content uh, throughout the off season. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.